in a coffin bed. Say, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, God with us. The living truth we have in you, awesome, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, God with us there. Come on, friend, we have in you. But when we put it all together, this is what we like to say. Jesus, that's what we call you. Manger born, but on a tree you die to say. Let's not be confused. Let's call him by his name. Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. You were born.
today. Come on, let's put our hands together and bless the Lord in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord comes today from the book of St. Mark, chapter 4. And we want to look at verses 35 through 41. St. Mark chapter 4, beginning with the 35th verse and concluding with verse 41. And the word of the Lord reads, And the same day when the eve was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitudes. They took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with them him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awaked him and say unto him, Master, carry thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them why are ye so fearful how is it that ye have no faith verse 41 and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Just for the next few minutes, I want to share from the topic, I had to go through it. I had to go through it. Illness, bereavement, death, sickness, trouble, pain, housing issue, job in jeopardy, financial issues, disease, family trouble. These ailments, whether they come individually or whether they come in large group, will make you wonder if the Lord really paying attention to what you're going through. I know that he is omnipresent, meaning that he is everywhere at the same time. I know he's omniscient, meaning that he knows everything. However, when you are a child of God and you are going through circumstances, if we are not careful, it will make you wonder out loud if God really know what you're going through. Does God really understand the pain of illness? Does God really understand how burdensome sickness can be? Does God really understand how death can break you down emotionally? Does God really understand that bereavement can be a process that lasts for years? Does God really understand how trouble, some trouble can be? Does God really understand how the effects of pain, whether it's from words or deeds, does God really understand that sometimes family trouble will make you want to forget about your own family? Does God understand that nowadays there's no such thing as job security? Some jobs are as secure as your supervisor feels on that day when you walk into the building. Does God really understand that sometimes our finances are not so good and we buy stuff that we shouldn't have bought? And some of us are even floating paychecks to paychecks in order to make ends meet. Does God really understand that even though I trust him, even though I love him, I have no desire to be homeless? Does God really understand that sometimes 
Sickness and diseases can show up when you least suspect it. How you can go to the doctor one day and get a great physical and then the weeks later you find yourself in the hospital having to deal with a surgery. It would be wonderful if God exercised some kind of special options for those of us who love God with all our heart, mind, and body, our heart, body, minds, and souls. And he gave us a special believer's only option for living. But since that's not the case, where would we be if we didn't have to deal with trouble? If we didn't know what pain felt like, if we didn't know what being sick felt like, what being broke felt like, what being lied on felt like. However, I have discovered something about God. And what I have discovered is that God sometimes will take a child of God and put you into situations and circumstances that has a conflict with your own personal agenda. In other words, God will take you to some places that you didn't want to go. God will put you in some circumstances that you did not order. And even though you can't see it at the time that you're going through, even though it might be painful at the time, God said he's working for our good. I found out that God allows circumstances to come into our lives for divine, divine reasons. Sometimes God brings us into circumstances to strengthen us. Sometimes God allows us to go through to get your attention. Sometimes God is trying to mature you on the fast track. Sometimes God is moving people out of your way so that you can focus on him. Sometimes God is peeling back years of anger and frustration that you've been going through in your life. Sometimes God is executing things that have held you back in life. Sometimes God has to sit you down in order to set you up. Sometimes God has to put us in the middle of mess for us to trust him. He had, he, he, grandma said he may move slow. He don't come when we want him to. But he's always on time. And in our text, we are taken to three locations. First, Jesus has just wrapped up his teaching on the shore of Galilee. It is here that he introduced the concept of the Beatitudes to those who had gathered by the thousands to hear him teach. Secondly, we are transported to the seashores where an exhausted Jesus has been given direction to his disciples to join him by boat. And in fact, in a fleet of ships that would go to the other side of Galilee. And lastly, we are taken to an incident on board the ship when a storm that was apparently not scheduled showed up because a seasoned fisherman or a boat owner would dare not release a boat into dangerous seas. Jesus, who is sleeping on the hinder part of the boat on the pillow, while on the top side of the boat are his 12 disciples. Some of them were experienced fishermen who are now experiencing the effects of a storm. The stormy weather circumstance is teaching you and I something and if you come close this morning, let me share three things that explains why Jesus, who knew full well before they lifted the anchor by the seaside, he knew that the storm was coming. And if they went out in the storm, the storm would cover him and his disciples. 
it would allow his beloved disciples, his inner circle, uh, to get caught up in a storm. And this would explain why you and I, a beloved disciple of Jesus, we are part of his inner circle. And even these Judas disciples, this would explain why we get caught up in storms. God wants to teach us obedience. Jesus uses passive language here when he says, let us go unto the other side. The boat may be the fastest way, but obvious it's not the best way. Nobody in their right mind would get on board a boat if they knew that once they got on board the boat that the storm that had, to, that had the potential to capsize the boat or to destroy the boat as they travel to their destiny. However, part of following Jesus involves that sometimes you have to have some blind fellowship. Uh, what my mama used to call trust. Following Jesus means that even though I can't see the future, even though God is not telling me what's in store for me in the future, I have to follow him in the process and I have to trust him. And in that, he's teaching me obedience. My brothers and my sisters, I have discovered that God does his best teaching not in the church, but on the outside of the church. That's why some of us are going through hell right now. It's because we're in a class with Jesus. That's why some of us look older than we actually are. It's because we're in a class with Jesus. A class of trouble. A class of heartache. A class of pain. But Jesus says to the disciples, get in the boat. And I will admit to you this morning that there is no indication of a storm when they got in the boat. But I will also have to admit that there are some disciples that are ground disciples and not water disciples. In other words, the ground is solid. The ground is stable. You can build on the ground. You can plant in the ground you can trust in the ground but trusting in water is another matter water represents liquidity and instability some of us would rather serve God when everything is going well than to serve God in our stable times but let me bust your spiritual bubble now and tell you that every now and then you may be on the water spiritually and don't even know it. You are going through some things right now and you thought that you were on dry ground. But when God says, I need to move you from where you are, I move you out of your comfort zone, move you from a desirable place and put you on the water. Help me. He wants to help us to understand that even though you may be big and bad, you are helpless on the water. Ships on the water may have rudders, but a wave can overrule a rudder. You can have sails masses that are grand and tall, but wind or the lack of wind can either toss you to or fro or either make you be stranded in the water. 
And that sounds like a testimony of some of us today who are going through our own situations and you thought you had control over your marriage. You thought you had control over your finances. You thought you had control over your family. You thought you had control over your health. You thought you had control over your friendship only to discover that you've been transplanted from a solid ground to a watery chaos. Yet in obedience, if that's where the Lord wants to take me, I have no choice but to be obedient to him and trust him and believe that he's going to do what's best for me. My brothers and my sisters, I don't mean to insult your intelligence. But God allows some things to happen to us so we can learn how to develop some spiritual sensitivity, some spiritual discernment about what's really, what it really means to serve God. In other words, he puts you on the boat so that you can learn about storms. So the study of storms is normology. These disciples got on the boat. Jesus retreated to the hinder part of the boat. He either brought a pillow with him or he utilized a pillow that was on board the ships. And Jesus went to sleep away from the disciples and they stood on the deck of the boat, surrounded by all of these other little ships. And they were experiencing a great storm. And what's interesting here to me is the Bible is clear that there are other little ships in the water at the same time. But only the ship that contained the 12 disciples that Jesus personally called. All the disciples are on the ship. There were other ships. But the ship was special because the 12 disciples who were become the 11 foundational apostles of the church was on board that ship and to make that boat even more special Jesus was on the boat but apparently the storm didn't cause panic to the other little ships but only the ship where the Lord was in the hinder part of the ship and the disciples was on the deck when the storm rose up the disciples says master Carry thou now that we perish? They woke up Jesus. Instead of taking some stormology notes, let's review this. They experience once in a lifetime winds. They saw the water begin to fill the boat. And instead of trusting in Jesus they woke him up now I'm not the smallest man in the room but I do know this that if the water fill the boat and Jesus is in the lower gallery of the boat the same water that's on the deck is now in the gallery the same smell that's on the deck. It's the same smell that's in the gallery. The same trouble that's on the deck. It's the same trouble that's in the gallery. And the difference is that Jesus is sleeping through the storm. But disciples were hitting the panic button. They 
were going crazy. They were sounding the alarm. They were talking smack. And then they had the nerve to say, Jesus, wake up. Don't you care about us? Well, before we throw these brothers overboard, let me suggest that sometimes believers are the main ones who panic in the time of a crisis. Jesus is trying to teach us stormology. He's trying to teach you that it is better to be in the storm with Jesus to be in a storm without Jesus. It is better to be laid off with Jesus than to be laid off without Jesus. It is better to be sick with Jesus than to be sick without Jesus. It is better to be in trouble with Jesus than to be in trouble without Jesus. It is better to be in a fight with Jesus to be in a fight without Jesus. Some of us who claim the name of Jesus forget about his name when trouble comes. But I come to realize that if we can shout about Jesus in the sanctuary we should be able to claim him in the streets. If we ain't a saying Jesus is a way maker in the church we ought to be able to sing thank you Lord in the emergency room. I've come to tell somebody to learn from your storm. Learn how to trust him more and more in your storm. Learn how to pray more in your storm. Learn how to believe more in your storm. And learn that your storm will lead God to get in the glory. What Jesus did was nothing short of a miracle. He walks through the water and he does something publicly that he could have done in private. He does something in front of the disciples so that they would believe his power. This is just the fourth chapter of Mark. And they had not seen a lot from Jesus. Some had been with him at the wedding. They saw and they heard him teach. But this was the first year of a three-year class with Jesus. And they really didn't know just how much power he had. I will have to admit to you this morning that I've been walking with Jesus over some years. And I will confess that I know more about him now than I knew back then. I have discovered that the longer you serve him, the more you get to know about him. Okay, somebody don't believe me. Let me suggest this. When a man and a woman initially get married, nobody knows everything about their spouse on the day one. I watched that show many a time, Married at First Sight. It takes time. As a matter of fact, you don't long ever you don't learn everything in the first year. It takes time. You don't know everything in the first five years. It takes time. They have seen Jesus turn water into wine. They have seen him teach the great multitude. But now they're about to see Jesus do something that none of us can do. Jesus stands in the face of the storm. And he tells the storm to get out of my face. Jesus stands up. He rebukes the wind. And the Greek word suggests that Jesus is the strongest word in his vocabulary. And he basically says to the wind, I have 
more authority than you. And I need to tell somebody this morning. Jesus' power is greater than any power you think you have. Jesus rebuked the wind and the sea. And the Bible said that even though the storm was raging, the water was now immediately calm. You see, my brothers and my sisters, the Lord is not just a miracle worker, but he allows us to see our miracle right before our eyes. The disciples saw the wind stop blowing. The disciples saw the waves stop crashing. And then there was a great calm. When God allows you to see your miracle, you better get ready for a great coming. In other words, God will settle your situation. He will ease your mind. And he will allow you to experience peace. Uh, the miracle that the Lord performed will bring peace in your life. In other words, he will put some kibosh on your chaos. In other words, he will dispose of it. He will put rest into your restlessness. He will make your problems go to sleep. He will make your troubles die down. He will make your enemies behave. He will cause your trouble to be at rest. And that's a miracle in itself. When you can see God take what that's supposed to mess up. Take that what's supposed to work against you and turn it around for your good. That's a miracle in itself. Mark is saying here it don't people don't realize how, who Jesus really was. How, they said what manner a man is this how, that even the wind how, and the sea obeyed how, but they should have said how, it's about right now how, that we should come together how, and have a praise party. How, I've come here this morning how, to give God some praise. How, I've come this morning how, to give him praise how, because of the miracles how, that's before me. How, he shaped my life. How, he saved me how, when I was on my way to hell. How, he gave his only begotten son, how, Jesus Christ, how, to die for me how, when I was on my way to hell. How, he let his son how, die on a Friday and on an early one Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand and I come to praise God for the miracles that he's done I come to praise him for the stuff that did not happen in my life and as a matter of fact the storm of life has taught me that I don't have to wait till the battle is over to give God praise I don't have to wait until my test results come back from the doctor to give him praise I don't have to wait until I stand before the judge for him to render his verdict to give him praise I can praise him now I can praise him now I can open up my mouth and say thank you thank you thank you for my miracle thank you for making the way out of no way thank you for handling my haters thank you for blessing me on my job thank you thank you thank you my storm has taught me how to praise him and if I praise God if I gotta praise him all by myself I'm gonna praise him heal me oh Lord and I shall be healed 
save me and I shall be saved for thou art my praise if I got to praise God in the hospital room I'm going to praise him if I got to praise him in an empty house I'm going to praise him if I got to praise him in the presence of my enemy I'm going to praise him I'm going to praise him I'm going to praise him because my miracle is on the way I had to go through this to learn obedience I had to go through this to learn stormology. I had to go through this to see my miracle. I can't feel it. It's flowing my way. I want to say this morning, God, whatever you are doing in this season, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me, God. Don't know what's going on, but I can feel there's a shifting in the atmosphere. So, God, I don't know what you're about to do, but I want to be obedient to your word, obedient to your will, obedient to your way. Lord, whatever you're doing. Don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. If you are healing, do it to me, God. If you're blessing, I'm standing here with my arms open wide. Does anybody know that when the storms or life is raging all around you, stop looking at that storm. Look to Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. When trouble seems to be all around you, stop looking at the trouble and look to Jesus. He's the way out of no way. When trials, tribulation, bring confusion and uncertainty, stop looking at the trials and look to Jesus, for he is the faithful one, the storm. The storm keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell night from day but when you know Jesus you have the assurance that your anchor holds and grips that solid rock for I am I'm confident in this that God will bring me out. I am confident that God is going to bring me out. I'm thankful this morning for the anointing that enabling power of God to do for me what I can do for myself. I need to tell you this morning that there is anointing running all through your house. There's an anointing running up and down your stairway. There is an anointing that's about to fall not only on you but on every member of your household. The anointing of God it breaks you it destroy bondage the anointing God have been waking me up during the night in many nights when I was awakened 
thought I had to go to the bathroom, but I was wrong. God wanted me on my knees. When I woke up in the middle of the night, I thought I was hungry, but I was wrong. God wanted me to get deeper in the word in order for him to strengthen me. He's trying to strengthen us in some areas of our life where we may be weak. I had to go through it. I had to go through the hurt. I had to go through the pain. I had to go through heartache. I had to go through disappointment. All because I went through it. I can now say that God is about to bless me. I'm about to be healed. I'm about to be delivered. God told me to tell somebody, oh my God, you had to go through, but better is coming. Better is on the way. Tell yourself, touch yourself. I had to go through it. I'm thankful this morning that I went through what I had to go through. And because I went through, God, he strengthened me. He's making me better because I went through. I had to go through this. Because God wanted to teach me obedience. God wanted to teach me scholarly. God wants us to see our miracles. Sometimes discouraged but not defeated. Cast down, but not destroyed. There are times that I just don't understand, but I believe it's turning around for me. I've had struggles and disappointments. There were times I felt so alone. Some of my friends, they let me down. But I still believe it's turning around for me. I can see the breaking of day. God is making a way. A change is coming for me. If I stand and believe, there is no doubt. He's working it out. It's turning around for me. It won't always be like this. God is perfecting that concern in me. Sooner or later, I turn in my favor. Sooner or later, turn in my favor. It's turning around for me. No matter the struggle, no matter what you're facing, Sooner or later. Because you went through what you went through. God is about to turn that thing around. For 
Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for your word to encourage my brother and to encourage my sister that we had to go through what we went through that you would get the glory. So even now, God, meet my brother, meet my sister, God, where they stand in need of. For we know, God, that every good and every perfect gift comes from you. So now, God, if there's one that's out of the ark of safety, and they don't know you. We pray even now, God, that you massage hearts. Help us to realize that the wages of sin is death. But only through you can we have each other life. So we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. for who you are in our lives. It's in the name of Jesus. We love and we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Is there one today? My brother, my sister, if you don't know Jesus, it's a real simple process. All you have to do is repeat after me. Just say, dear God, I am a sinner. I messed up. I missed the mark. But today, I, I stand on Romans 10 and 9 that says, if I confess with my mouth and believe And I shall be saved. It's just that simple. Salvation is free. But it's up to you to take the first step. Jesus said, I stand at the door and I knock. You say, when did he knock? Every time you hear the word of God, he's knocking. Every time someone shares the gospel with you, he's knocking. So my brother and my sister, why not? Why not today? Jesus is standing with his arms open wide saying, whosoever will, let him come. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's bless the Lord in this place. I had to go through what I went through. As we prepare Deacon Mary is coming to bless our tithes and our offering but my brother and my sister if you desire or if you gave your life to the Lord or if you desire prayer or even if you want to unite with the Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church. Click the link right below the subscribe button and it will take you to this page. You can click I need prayer. I gave my life to the Lord or I desire to join Mount Moriah. It's 
put your name, your email address, your phone number, and someone from our leadership team will contact you today. At this time, we thank you so much. for continuing to sow into this ministry. Mount Moriah would not be able to do the things that we do if it wasn't for you, my brother and my sister. So we thank you in Jesus' name. At this time, Dick and Mary was blessed the offering. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus to give you thanks, O oh Lord, for this offering. Father, we thank you for those that gave and even those that had a mind to give. Now, Lord, we ask that you bless this offering, that it may be used for the upkeep and building of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just one announcement. At the 10 o'clock hour, Sunday school, Sunday school. As pastor say, everybody, let's attend a Sunday school. There's classes for everyone. Your Zoom information is on the screen. Please, ma'am, please, sir, meet us in Sunday school at the 10 o'clock hour. To God be the glory. It won't always be like this. God is perfecting that concerning me. Sooner or later, you're turning my favor. He's turning around for me. It's turning around for me. I don't know who this is for, but it won't always be like this. God is perfecting that concerning me. Sooner or later, you're turning my favor. It's turning around for me. 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 Father God, in Jesus' name. God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We had to go through this. So God, we thank you for the hurt. We thank you for the pain. We thank you for the disappointment. We thank you for the things that did not happen. Because God, we are sure today that sooner or later it's going to turn around for our good. So we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. It's in the name of Jesus we love and we pray. And every heart did say amen, amen, amen. So let us love God, love people, and make disciples for Jesus Christ. Hey, God bless you and have an awesome week.
morning, Mount Moriah family. We have just completed season one of Friday Night Life, and we want to thank everyone who participated in making it a huge success. It has been a wonderful pleasure to work with each of you. We also want to thank everyone for your overwhelming support and for your thoughtful words of encouragement. Many of you tuned in week after week and offered positive feedback and your prayers. We greatly appreciate each of your kind gestures. So what's next? Season two. With that being said, we will be taking a short break for the season two production. Therefore, there will not be any new episodes during the month of April. In order to plan, though, uh, for the season two production, Friday Night Life is sending out an invitation for each of you. We would love for you to be involved and showcase your artistry. So if you are a member of Mount Moriah and you're interested in appearing on Friday Night Life, now is your opportunity to do so. We are featuring all of the performing arts in the areas of singing, dancing, instrumentation, mime, oratory, drama, and even visual arts. Just send your email to fnl at mountmoriahcharleston.com. Please include your name, your performing arts gift, and your contact information. Upon receiving your email, we will reach out to each of you. So don't forget to send in your information as soon as possible so you can participate in season two. We look forward to hearing from you. And remember, the world awaits to be ministered through your gifts. God bless you.